You know, the pastor and I, we met in the subway and we've been talking about some stuff and some things that I've been studying and those are the things that he's talking about and we both, we connect when it comes to the spirit and how we connect when it comes to the word. I'm a believer in Jesus Christ. I was, and the, he and I, we share some things in common. And when I, I used to go to a church that I was baptized in Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And then one Sunday evening, I got home and I started speaking to the Lord. And I tell him that, Lord, I want to know you. I want to know yes, you. Yes, yes. And he started to question me. Hmm. And that was one of the first times when I hear the voice of the Lord clearly. Mm -hmm. He started questioning me. He asked me his name. Hmm. And I couldn't differentiate Jesus from the Father. And he started to speak to me and questioning me. And then when he questioned me and I answered the questions from the Word, and then I realized that the name of the Father, the name of the Son, and the name of the Holy Ghost is one name, Amen. Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, Lord. So it struggled me then because I was going to a church that did not have that belief. Mm -hmm. And I went back to the Lord and I speak to him again and I cry out to him again. And clearly he, he sent me to a pastor that I have never met before, a man that I don't even know his name. Amen. He told me who to go to to get in touch Amen. with that person. Yep. I went to the person and I and told the person that the Lord said I should ask them to baptize me. I didn't tell you how I want to be baptized. He just said, you want to be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ? And I said, yes, sir. And I got baptized two days later in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then the word of the God of God begins to open hey, itself. Hallelujah. The Bible becomes a new book. Yes, I start to see the book in a different way, in a different light. Amen. And when I, I share that with, with, with Pastor Peter, and he had the same experience Amen. with the baptism and how he was baptized in Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, and then he was baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And God have made the change. So today my message is going to be from that topic. The Godhead. Bless the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I give you thanks today. Father God Almighty, I pray that your word, O oh God Almighty, will come true with clarity today. Father God Almighty, so you speak to me, O God Almighty. I pray that you speak, O God Almighty, through me today. So as I understood, O God Almighty, your Godhead, I pray, O God Almighty, that through me, O God Almighty, I will be able to teach that Godhead, O God Almighty, to your people. Just to give them a, a greater clarity, O God Almighty, of you and O God Almighty and how your body you. is situated. Father God Almighty, I pray that you'll just anoint the word and you'll anoint me and speak through me yes, today. God. In Jesus' name. Hey, Amen. 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 We look at the book of St. John, St. John chapter 1. St. John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, Amen. and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Amen. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him, Jesus Christ, was the life, was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended not. Mm -hmm. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. The same came for a witness, mm -hmm. to be a witness of the light, which is Christ, that all men through him might be saved. He was not the light, that was John, but was sent to be a witness of that light. 
and was the true light, which lighted every man that cometh in the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him. How magnificent that is for him to meet the world, and yet still he was in the world. And the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Even to them that believed on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh and dwell among us and we behold his glory the glory as the only begotten of the father filled with grace and truth bless the name of the lord so we see where jesus christ was in the beginning with the father it says in the beginning was the word and the word was with god However, that makes two people in the beginning. God and the Word. But the Bible says, and the Word became flesh. His name was Jesus Christ when he came. So now you have God the Father and Jesus the Son of God. So if there is but one God, then how is it that in the beginning... They said that it was two. And that was what was confusing and is still confusing to many people. But they do not see the part where it says, and the word becomes flesh. They did not see the part that says, the word was God. So in the beginning was the word and the word was with God, but the word was God. So it is a spirit and a body that was in the beginning. So in the beginning, there was the spirit, which is the eternal spirit that knoweth and doeth all things and create all things. But with the spirit was a flesh, was a body. And this body was what do all the work. So the spirit would speak to the body and then the body will do the work. So when God created man in his own image after his own likeness, God did not create man to be living as a spiritual being, but he made man in his image because his image was Jesus Christ, the word or the son. So God created man in his own image. He said, let us create man in our own image, after our own likeness, which is the two of them. So Jesus, as it says in the book of Hebrews, that Jesus is the express image of the invisible God. So God has an image, even though God is an eternal spirit. So, in the beginning there was two the two becomes one because the spirit dwells into its body and then the two becomes one we see where people get distracted by when jesus said go he therefore teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy ghost and now they're saying that there are three gods saying, no, you have a God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. But the Bible said, hear ye Israel, for the Lord thy God is but one God. So we cannot have God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. There is no such thing as a three God. Yes, we cannot deny that there is a trinity of God. Because there is a trinity in human beings. As a human being, I have a body. And God has given me a spirit. I would miss my spirit 
and my body that I have, I also have a consciousness which is called my soul. So I am a triune being. Yes. So God is a triune God yes. who has a body. Amen. God also is a spirit and God is also a comforter of the Holy Ghost. Now this Holy Ghost that we or many people believe to be another God, it is just the manifestation of the invisible God. So when God the Father stepped into the body of the Son, which is Jesus Christ, then whatsoever he manifests is called the Holy Spirit. So when Jesus said, I am in my Father and my Father in me and we in you. So the Father and the Son dwell in us. Then how is it that we say we have the Holy Ghost? When did we receive the Father? When did we receive the Son? When did we receive the Holy Ghost? If it is three gods. When you receive the Holy Ghost, what you receive is the manifestation of the Father and the Son combined together. And that is the Holy Ghost. Because the Father is a spirit and it cannot be contained by the human body. So our body cannot contain the direct spirit of God. So what God does is place his manifestation in us. So with the manifestation of the Father, what we do, when we go out on the street, we are supposed to manifest God because what we have in us is what we give us. So the book of Hebrews chapter 1 says, God, whom at sundry time and in diverse manners spake in time past to the fathers by the prophet, hath in these last days spoken to us by his son, by whom he had appointed all things, by whom he also made the world, whom is the brightest of his glory and the express image of his person. So Christ is the express image of the person of God the Father. Now when we look in the book of Colossians chapter 1, verse 13, who had delivered us from the power of darkness and had translated us into the kingdom of his dear son, in whom he had redeemed through his blood, even forgiveness of sin, whom is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. So the Bible clearly speaks and tells us that Jesus Christ is the image of the invisible God. Because no man can see God at any time. So if we are going to see God, what we have to see is his manifestation. But we cannot deny that from the beginning, God has an image. Because if God had made man from the beginning in his own image, after his own likeness, then if God was simply a spirit, then how could a man have this form? This is not the form of a spirit. This is the form of an image. But when Moses said to God in Exodus 33, said, show me thy glory, meaning show me your identity. God said, no man shall see my face and live, but I can tell you my name. I can do good to whom I will. God said, I am going to put you in the cleft of the rock. Moses was in the cleft of the rock and God covered him with his hand. But when God moved his hand, Moses said, he saw the back part of a man. So what Moses saw was the image of God. So the image of God is the image of a man. So that's Jesus Christ who was there with the Father from the beginning. The Spirit did not do the work. 
It was the body that do it, the work. The Bible says Jesus created, made the world. The world was made by him. And he was in the world. So Jesus made the world. The image, the body made the world. Not the spirit. The spirit anoints the body and the body do it, the work. When Jesus came and walking on earth, he said, my father work at Hilo. Meaning my father work from then until now. But now I work. So we see the difference with the two, the Father and the Son. But the Father dwelleth in the Son, and the Son becomes God. It is as simple as if I buy a bottle of water. A water has no shape nor form. So I could classify a bottle of water as, as, as the Spirit. Because the Spirit has no shape, neither does it have a form. But if I should drink that bottle of water, where would the bottle of water be? Where would the spirit now be? The spirit would be in me. So, so is it that when we have the Holy Spirit, then the spirit dwelleth in me. So if you want the Holy Spirit, then you will have to get it from me. So Jesus was the image of the invisible God. Jesus was who made the world. We were made in the image of Jesus Christ. If we look in the book of Genesis, it will tell you, Genesis chapter 1, 26, it says, and God says, let us make man after our likeness. God didn't say, I am going to make man in my likeness, in my image. Otherwise, men would be walking around, flying around, going through doors and walls. <laughs> because he, man would have been spirit. But God made man in the image of Christ. The image of his son. So Colossians 2 verse 8 warns us about people who teach the word of God and take a little and try to spoil the word. It says, beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and a vain deceit after the tradition of men. And that is what happened with a lot of us because we grow up in church. We have the tradition that we've learned from we were a child growing up and we refuse to move on, we yeah. refuse to accept mm -hmm. the word that God is speaking to us now. The Bible said Jesus grew in stature of his father. That means revelation came to him as he grew and learned more and be more like his father. Then what about us? Why should we sit down and listen to the same message from we were a child coming all the way up and we still have not gotten a revelation as to where Christ is directing us. No more hand me down. We need to get the revelation. It is like if I am here and the pastor comes to me and he says, Brother Omar, go to Brooklyn. Buy five pounds of rice. And I stand here and I say, oh, pastor said I should go to Brooklyn and buy five pounds of rice. I go to everybody and I tell them, oh, pastor said I should go to Brooklyn and buy five pounds of rice. It means that I did not understand what he said. Because if I had understood what he said, then I would take the bus, the train, or drive to Brooklyn and do what he said. But no, many of us, we sit and we just run and tell everybody, Oh, go to Brooklyn. Pastor said, go to Brooklyn and buy rice. Pastor said, go to Brooklyn and buy rice. Where is the revelation? Did you understand what he said? Now, do we understand what the word of God is saying? Are we doing what the word of God is saying? Or we keep repeating what the word of God said? We need to stop repeating and doing, showing that we understood what was said, what was spoken to us of the Lord. Uh -huh. 
in St. John chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He was speaking to his disciples. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If he knew me, he would have known my Father also. Because if you see him, you see the Father. If you know him, automatically you know, you know the Father. Because he is the image of the Father. But even though he said that, they still not understood what he said. So Philip said unto him, Lord, show us the Father and it will suffice us. So you see, even though he was there telling them that if you see me, you see the Father, they did not understand what he was saying. So he had to come in verse 9, he said, in verse 9, Jesus said unto, the, unto him, that is Philip, have I been so long with you, yet hast thou not known me, Philip? <laughs> Who was speaking there? That was the Father that was speaking. Because he asked to see the Father. So the Father was speaking to Jesus now. So it was not the, not the Son that was speaking. It was the Father now who was speaking through the Son. The Father said, have I been so long with you, Philip, and you have not known me? So in some cases, people would say, oh, that means Jesus is schizophrenic. Because he, he's speaking in two different people. But the two different persons that was speaking were saying the same thing. So he said, have I been so long with you, Philip, yet you have not known me? He had seen me, he had seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, show us the Father? Believe thou not, I am in the Father, and the Father in me, the words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me doeth the work. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, mm. or else believe me for the very work's sake. So Jesus was manifesting what was in him or who was in him. Jesus was manifesting the Father. So the words that Jesus was speaking, they were not his words, but they were the Father's word because the Father in him was speaking to the people. But back, when we back up and we go down into St. John chapter 10, verse 27, Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice and follow after me. Who sheep? Is it Jesus' sheep or the Father's sheep? He said, my sheep hear my voice and follow after me. And I will give unto them eternal life. And they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hands. Hold a minute there. So we are Jesus' sheep because we are in Jesus' hands. Jesus went back and he continues. In 29 he says, My father which gave them me is greater than all and no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. So if it is Jesus' hand, then how does it become the father's hand? Because the father have no hand of himself. The father's hand is Jesus Christ. So whatsoever Jesus touched, it is the Father that touched. Yes. Whatever Jesus said, it is the Father who said it. Yes. Because the Father dwelt in him. So the Father was showing me these things and showing me that the Father and the Son is two in one. It is just the same body, but a body with a spirit. So there is not two of me, but it is one. So when Jesus said, in the book of 
Same place in the book of John. Jesus speaking now, the comforter. And he said, when I go, I will send you another comforter. That means the comforter was there. He said, I will send you another comforter. Which is the Holy Ghost. But you know what part of it? He said, and I will pray the Father. And he shall give you another comforter. That he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive. Because it seeth him not. Neither knoweth him. But he know him. For he dwell with you. So the comforter was already there with them. The world could not see it. But he was there with them. They could see the comforter. He said, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. So Jesus, the comforter, was there with them in flesh. But he said, when I go, I will send you another comforter. He will, but he says, but when I come, so he will be sending himself. But this time when he sent himself, he will send himself in a spiritual form. So when he sent himself back into a spiritual form as the comforter. So now when Christ was on earth, if he was in Jerusalem, he was only in Jerusalem. If he was in Syria, he was only in Syria. But now when he sent himself again, he can be in America, Germany, Africa, Jamaica, Guyana. He can be everywhere at once. So he sent himself in a many-membered body. Not just a single body this time, but a many-membered body. So it is still the one and the same God. So the Father and the Son is just the Spirit and the flesh. Now the Holy Ghost was not there from the beginning. Because there was no one for God to manifest himself through. And if we go back and we look in the, in the book of Genesis, it will, you will see the Lord God created the heaven and the earth. The Lord God created. No, it didn't say the Lord God. It said, and God created. And God created. But when it comes to man, it says, and the Lord God created man. So he was just God. But when men came in, he becomes Lord. Because now something to worship him was there. Because you cannot be Lord without worship. So God created man, so now he becomes the Lord God. This same Jesus who, you have, who they have crucified, God has now made him Lord and Christ. So Jesus became Lord. He was not born Lord. He was not even born a son. Isaiah said, Unto us a child is born. The child was just born, but the son was given. How he, how he got the sonship was the Bible said, if you are led by the Spirit of God, then you get power to become the Son of God. So a child was born, but unto us the son was given. And his name shall be called the Wonderful the Counselor, the Everlasting Father. Then who said he's not God? He's the Everlasting Father because the Everlasting Father dwelleth in him. So he was the Everlasting Father. In Hebrews chapter 1, the Father called him God. The Father said, unto my son, I say, thy throne. Your throne, O oh God. That's the Father speaking. The Father said, Unto my Son I say, Your throne, O oh God. So if the Father calleth the Son God, then how can we not recognize that He is the Almighty God? 
because he is the body of which the almighty God dwelleth in. Whatever he does, it is the work of God. Whatever he says, it is the word of God. Because from the beginning, that was his name. He was the word of God. So the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is Jesus Christ. Jesus could not have a name that is greater than the Father's name. He could not have the comfort that could not be a name which is greater than the Father's name. But the Bible says he has received a name which is greater than every other name on the heaven and earth. And at that name, Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. So everything in heaven and in earth has to bow down to that name, Jesus Christ, who is Lord. So when Jesus said, go he therefore, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the name of the Son, the name of the Holy Ghost. He was talking about the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So one is not wrong when one say, I was baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. But one gets wrong when he baptized and not use the name of Jesus Christ. When you refuse to use the name, you are wrong. But if you use the titles mm. as an expression to the name, you are not wrong. But, because Jesus cannot be wrong when he said, but we have to remember that Jesus speak many things to his disciples and he speak many things in parables. And he said unto them, when I go and the comforter comes, he will bring all things to remembrance whatsoever I have taught you. So all the mysteries that Jesus spoke when he was there with the disciples on the day of Pentecost, mm -hmm. when the comforter came, that was when all those mysteries began to open. And that is why when Peter and the other twelve, when they said, Repent every one of you and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the removal of your sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. But when Paul met certain disciples in Ephesus, Paul said unto them, Have ye received the Holy Ghost since he believed? And they said, we have not much heard of any Holy Ghost. He said unto them, then what then were you baptized? He said, well, we were baptized by John's baptism. John said unto the people that they should believe on him which is to come after him. That was on Christ Jesus. But John did not use the name. John point them to the Lamb of God who was supposed to come after him. But John did not point them to a name. So in verse 5, he said, And Paul baptized them in the name of Jesus Christ, laid a hand upon them, and they received the gift of the Holy Ghost. So the name matters much. And when I was struggling with baptism, and the Lord was telling me from early in, my, in my, my faith that you need to baptize over. I did not know why he was telling me that I need to get a fresh baptism. But I continue in the baptism of Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. But, when, but that day when the Lord came to me and spoke to me openly. And he showed me these scriptures that I am now showing to you. He said to me. My name, the one name, the name of the Father, the name that was given to the Son, the name that is given to the Holy Spirit is the one and the same name, Lord 
Jesus Christ. So I am given this word that the Lord has given to me. The Godhead. Jesus Christ is the fullness of the Godhead body. So whatever we want, we have to ask for it. Whether it be by word or by deed, but we must do it all in the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ who have made us in his image after his likeness. And after he made us in his image, after his likeness, he made the world also. Now he is the one that comes to dwell in the world that he made. And now he comes to dwell in us that he made. How awesome is our God that he can make us and then come inside of us to live. Oh, yes. Thank you, Lord. The angels would have said, what is man that God is so mindful of him? What is man? What am I that God is mindful of me? What did I do? I did not do anything to deserve this power, this glory that God has placed upon me. I am but a mere man who was born in sin and shaped in iniquity. I am a man who sins daily. I am a man who have to keep going back to God to re for repentance. Yet the angel never sinned. But God has made us. Greater than the angel. He said, Unto which angel have I called a son? Unto which angel have I said, I have begotten thee? He have never called an angel a son. He have never said that he have begotten an angel. But God called us son. God said he have begotten us. Jesus is the first begotten of the Father, but we are the begotten sons of Jesus, of Jesus and of the Almighty God. Because those who are led by His Spirit, to them gave He power to become the sons of God. So I did not have to do anything of my will. All the things that I do, God has ordained it before the foundation of the world. Hallelujah. He knew me before I was born. He knew me before I was created. I was in the mind of God before the foundation of the world. God knew us. And us being born is only to manifest. The work of God through us. The Bible says, He's the potter, and we are the clay. Hallelujah. And so He has made some of us for honor, hmm. and He has made some for dishonor. Yes. So He knew exactly what you were made for, He knows exactly what you are going to manifest. Hmm. My brothers and my sisters, I pray today that we all better be on that side. Mm -hmm. We better make sure that we are of the clay that is made to manifest God. Amen. Let's hope that we are honorable clay oh, yes. so that we can day by day manifest oh, yes. Jesus Christ. Yes. So Christ is gone in the flesh mm -hmm. but he's back in the spirit Thank you, Jesus. so now we the church is the body of christ mm -hmm. so we are the spiritual body of christ and if we are the spiritual body of christ then that means god dwells in us yes. it means that 
We are now the word. We are the living word. Because mm -hmm. in the beginning was the word. We are the word today. Because whosoever God uses is his image. And we are supposed to be the image of God. So that he can use us to do his will. Because God does not do things of his own. But he manifests himself through us. So that he work hither and now we work. Jesus Christ, the fullness of the Godhead body. Now we, the church, is Jesus Christ, the Son of Man walking, the Christ to the people. Jesus said, did I not call you God in the scriptures? So if then he called them God in the scriptures because he have used Israel to manifest himself to the other nations. To know the church is here to manifest Christ to the world. Now who is the church? The church is now the Christ on earth. The church is who display God. So when you come to the church, not the building, uh -huh. but the people, when you come to the people, you come to God. Right. That is why Jesus said in the book of St. John 20, verse 21, Whosoever sins you remit is remitted, and whosoever sins you retained is retained, because man now has power to forgive sins. But they say to him that you must have the devil. Because which man can forgive sin? That's what they say. Only God can forgive sin. Because that's what the scripture said. But Jesus was now telling us that the scripture is us. We are the reading of the word. So whatever we do, that is the word. Because we are now the word of God to the people. We are the manifestation of the invisible God. I bless you today. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I come before you, God. Father God Almighty, I pray, O God Almighty, that your word was understood. Father God Almighty, I pray, O God, that the hearts are open to receive it. But Father God, you have delivered it today, Father God. And your word shall not come back void. But Father God Almighty, it shall rest upon the hearts of your people. And Father, that no one can say that they have not hear your word. Bless us all today, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen.